Greetings and salutations. It is I, Mr. Nothing, the museum curator of the weird and the strange and the host who might be a ghost. Welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the weird and unusual and out of the ordinary literature that I have found in my travels all around an island town that suffers from some unusual precipitation. Today it is Short Story Tuesday, a day where I can talk about all the beautiful short story short stories in the world, all the unusual ones that force you to to examine uh, the world you live in and uh, from a different perspective. Uh, at least that's what I'm what I'm hoping for on Short Story Tuesdays. Uh, sometimes I just find normal short stories, but today uh, is not one of those days. It is super hot as of late. We're in the dog days of summer, uh, 100 degree temperatures, and sometimes you just want to sit back and relax. You don't want to, you don't want to think too hard about a short story. Uh, you do want to do some thinking, but not too much. You don't want to focus on a 20 page Philip K. Dick short story that focuses on the idea of like, what if robots were people? Uh, sometimes you just want to focus on like, you want to sit back, chill out, avoid the hot weather, and read something simple. And today, yeah, today is one of those days um, when I started the Short Story Tuesday kind of format thing, I had considered um, incorporating all kinds of short stories, and that includes sh short stories aimed at children, uh, children's books. Uh, but I, I hadn't really figured out which one to include. I could have read like The Very Hungry Caterpillar for this channel, but I don't know who, who that would be for. <laughs> uh, so um, I, uh, yeah, so I, uh, I did find one uh, and I want to talk about a short story that focuses on unusual precipitation uh, and hamburgers, both of both of which are very strange. I am talking about Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs. Uh, that would be by Judy and Ron Barrett. Um, Ron also did the illustrations for the book, some of which I will put throughout this video up here. Um, of course, making sure to give him credit uh, because they're pretty pretty interesting illustrations. So this this video is going to be a bit different. I'm not going to go too in depth with analysis just because uh, you know it's a children's book and like they're like although children's books can have heavy themes, I wouldn't necessar necessarily like not all of them deserve like to to be like in depth. This is the study of human life and man's inhumanity towards man. No, let's let's focus on uh, on the story at hand and then talk about like a few of the things I noticed in it. So Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs starts with a grandfather hanging out with his uh, two grandchildren um, eating breakfast and then afterwards he tells them a story. Uh, so you know, a little bit of a framing device there. We got some Shakespeare going on. So the story focuses on the uh, the grandfather telling the children the story about an island town ca uh, called Chew and Swallow, um, which you can see like how like on the nose that name is. Uh, and Grandpa notes that. The interesting thing about this town is that when it rains and it snows and stuff like that, it doesn't just normally rain or snow. No, food falls from the sky. Uh, uh, you get pea soup sometimes, you get hamburgers coming down, uh, eggs for breakfast, uh, milkshakes for dessert, all kinds of things which make the children happy. Uh, it draws uh, tourism to the town. Uh, and you know the that means the the people who live there don't have to pay for food. All of their needs are met uh, simply by this raining food, which is very nice. However, uh, like with most cases of food falling from the sky, it eventually spirals out of control. Uh, you, they get a pea soup fog that is so dense that like their clothes get wet, presumably, and like nobody wants to be going through pea soup all the time so that would be pretty bad like you they get a tornado torm a tomato tornado that's gonna that's hard to say tomato tornado uh a, a bunch of pancakes fall from the sky uh and cover the school um extremely large pancakes uh so it's hard to get into the school 
uh, so that's it's inter it's interrupting with town services, uh, and things are beyond the ability of these town people to handle. The residents decide that they have to leave the town because they can't thrive here anymore with with the uh, food weather out of control. So they decide to build or take the food and build rafts, and they take those rafts to. Um, Another land where uh, when it rains, it just rains water. And when it snows, it rains. It, you get you get frozen water and ice and stuff like that. So it's very normal weather. And the people are surprised to find that they actually have to pay for food now. Uh, so a bit of a culture shock there. Uh, but they are glad to be out of the, um, the bad weather for now. And that's where Grandpa's story ends. And then the next day, they discover that it snowed, uh, regular snow. And so Grandpa takes some sledding. And as they're sledding down the hill, they, they take a look around and they imagine um, the landscape filled with, with food. And, and so the story has clearly left an impact on them. And that's where the story ends. So in terms of analysis, uh, just two things I want to note. The first is uh, many children's stories, like authors have to um, have to spark imagination uh, when, when they're writing, like get children thinking and considering uh, various scenarios and like, you know, trying to, they, uh, trying to like fixate or like trying to like, build up that imagination that the children have uh, so they can use it further on down the road. And I think that story does that pretty well here because like uh, at the end, like it, uh, the children in the story are forced to use their imagination to consider what, what if like the landscape was surrounded and, and like food falling from the sky. Uh, but I think that's a good prompt for the children reading the story to be like, oh, what if the, what if it rained food from the sky? What would that look like? How would your town be different? And so um, I do think this, this story sparks uh, children's imagination. It certainly sparks my imagina imagination every time I think of it. Uh, every time I see the movie that's related to it. Uh, it, it's, it's very interesting and very, very cool. Like, I would absolutely love pancakes that fell from the sky. Like, pancakes, eggs, pizza. Uh, I wouldn't like a tomato tornado so much, so I can, I can sympathize with the residents there. Uh, but, uh, you know, moderation is good. And again, that's the second point I want to make. Um... Uh, moderation, how it's it seems to be a focus of this, um, at least the lesson of this uh, of this story. Like the town's residents love the the pancakes and the pizza and the the chicken and the the cookies and all that all that good stuff, but they overindulge. And um, how the story shows that they overindulge is by too much too much of it coming down at once. Like, nobody wants so much pea soup, you only want a little bit of it. Nobody wants giant pancakes that cover an entire school. You only want, like, maybe a short stack of pancakes. Maybe two if, if, you, uh, if you're feeling saucy. Uh, so I think that's, a, that's an interesting way to teach children moderation is like, oh, you think this would be interesting. Well, what if, what if it never stopped? What if it just kept going and going and going and you had to leave uh, the town that you loved? Uh, because um, this this great thing turned out to be kind of kind of bad. So uh, I do like that that's um, that 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 kind of dark side is there uh, to, as a lesson for for children and and possibly also adults. Overall, I would say this is this is a great children's story. Uh, I read it when I was younger and I loved it, and I re um, I read it now and I still like it. It's still a, a fantastic story about like about like a preponderous like or preponderous like a, a wacky situation that never that might never happen but like you kind of want it to maybe happen because free pancakes out of out of the deal right uh so yeah i would definitely recommend that you you go out there and read it if you have children youngsters i uh, mayhaps you can go find it and and read it to them um, otherwise, uh, you know, um, just read it for yourself and, and have a good time. Uh, I think you can find it online. I might put a link to it in the description so that you can find it that way. Uh, it is a pretty old story. Um, otherwise, uh, feel free to, uh, leave a comment below with what you thought of the story or what I said. If you, if you disagree vehemently or if you agree, uh, with what I was saying about, um, the points I made with the story. 
uh, don't forget to like, share, and sub subscribe so that uh, we can uh, talk about more books like Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs in the future. I'm thinking probably Jumanji down the road. Uh, I remember that being a pretty fun short story, uh, especially children's lit, uh, to read. So that'll be fun. Um, in the meantime, uh, until then, uh, I bid you the best of times in your weird and pancakey travels. Farewell.